All right, can you hear me? Perfect. Um, yeah, so I'll start with the uh, traditional who am I section. Uh, I'm going to actually speak a little bit more about myself than I would normally like to. Uh, but in this particular case, I think it's a good way of communicating how I reach some of the conclusions that I'm going to, to present next. Uh, so I'm a Romanian living in Berlin, uh, just like Daniel, just like Ramona, just like a few other people from, uh, from the Camaillo. Uh, history and community. Uh, I was at uh, Focus, like Fraunhofer Focus in 2006, doing my uh, diploma project, uh, something about the IMS, because it was all the hype back then. Uh, I think 2006 was around uh, the first fork of, uh, of SER. Uh, and back then I joined uh, uh, this, uh, this small company uh, called Lipitigo. Uh, they were doing mostly servicing and consulting for, for telecoms, but they wanted to do uh, products as well. And for some reason, they thought uh, uh, that me, who was just fresh out of the university and thought he knows everything, uh, they thought it's a good idea to put me in charge of the first product that they will do. And we came up with, with Palladion, which Daniel already nicely introduced. Uh, just out of curiosity, how many of you know it or? Okay, so know it, quite a few people, good. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a monitoring product for voice over IP networks, uh, primarily focused on SIP. It also does uh, RTP, RTCP, and a bunch of other protocols I don't even remember anymore. Uh, and despite the fact that I did lots of mistakes, uh, things turned out somehow okay. Uh, IPTGO got acquired by Acme Packet in 2012, and then uh, I think you all know Acme Packet at its turn got acquired by Oracle. Uh, so now Palladion is called Oracle Communication Session Monitor Family of Product, which is <laughs> <laughs> short and sweet, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, I wanted to, to, to give you a bit of uh, insights on, uh, on how Palladion was working. Going back here, doesn't matter. Uh, so it was a uh, it was a C application uh, reading the messages from the network. So it was capturing the traffic. It still is, but I don't no longer work on it. That's why I talk in uh, past tense. Um, and it was uh, uh, parsing the SIP messages and correlate them in a SIP transaction, the SIP transaction in SIP calls and then the calls into end-to-end -end calls, right? So you get this uh, full end-to-end -end view for how calls are flowing through your network. Uh, and we are inserting uh, uh, metadata about each call in MySQL, and also in this C process, uh, we are capturing uh, various uh, performance metrics, metrics, and store those in MySQL as well. Uh, right, and over time things got complex. Uh, one of the reasons for which uh, things got technically complex uh, was that with each new metric, we also added complexity to this uh, pretty monolithical C application. Uh, and we had a large number of metrics. So we had customers with half a million uh, metrics on a, on a single system. Uh, each of them had parameters and so on, so quite a, quite a bit of work. Uh, and for each new feature or new protocol that we added, we need to make we needed to make sure that the metrics are still working, right? So this this got complex over time, quite complex, and it also was difficult when we had to scale out. So our our customers had uh, uh, numerous servers in uh, multiple data centers and the data centers on different continents. So we needed to provide a global view of of all this. Uh, which is not very simple when you when what you do is have because you have the data locally uh, and about yeah the data is distributed but still you need to present a, 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 a complex view of of the whole network uh, and that's when we started realizing that uh, uh, distributed applications are really hard and uh, I remember with my colleagues. Uh, we were thinking that it would be nice to have a system just like Palladion to monitor Palladion itself. Uh, and with this, I think you can feel a bit of my pain. Um, because 
uh, we, are, we are thinking we are, we're doing a pretty good job in helping uh, uh, voice over IP operators uh, monitor and troubleshoot their systems, uh, but there was no one to help us. And this was kind of the initial ad idea for, for what's called PacketBit. Uh, it's actually started uh, exactly one year ago, uh, not by me, uh, by Monica. She's actually my, my, my wife, and, uh, but she's also a software developer, and she also worked on Palladion. Uh, so yeah, we're partners in pretty much everything. She was the courageous one who quit her job and started this open source project absolutely from scratch. Uh, really no, no line of code before quitting. Uh, and uh, she, she had a bit of success, so uh, there was enthusiasm, enthusiasm in the community. Uh, so she convinced me to also quit the Oracle job, and, and I joined her full time in, uh, in last November. Um, so the project is quite new, but uh, what we're trying to achieve is also quite ambitious. It's, uh, we're trying to make it easier or better to monitor and troubleshoot, it, sh and troubleshoot uh, distributed applications. And uh, we figured out that a good way of, uh, of approaching this is by looking at the communication between the various components, right? Because uh, the different components of a distributed system uh, can be uh, can be running on different programming language, different software stacks, uh, different operating systems, but what they all have in common, for sure, is that they use the network to communicate between themselves, right, almost by definition. Uh, so we figured that if we look at the communication between the, the components, you we would pretty quickly get the, the big picture of what's going on. Uh, this is an insight we, we got from the, from the telephony world. Uh, it's where it's I, f I think you all do, do um, commonly troubleshooting like that, but look by looking at the SIP packets and so on. Uh, it's not very common in other worlds, like in web applications and so on. It's 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 not a common thing. Uh, so this was this was our our idea, and we thought it's a good way to start with this because we can differentiate it easier. Um, yeah, and protocols are universal. Also, it's objective, because if something happens on the network, then you know for sure it happened. Otherwise, for example, log files, you're trying to uh, debug a, a, an application, you have to trust its own logs file, so it's, uh, it's not 100%. And, it, and you have no latency overhead, because you work on a copy of the traffic, there's nothing in front of it to, to, to cause problem and so on. Um, so how it works, uh, quite similar with how Palladion worked, so it captures the, the wire traffic. Um, it follows the TCP streams and decodes a bunch of protocols. Uh, this is where the main difference is. Palladion was uh, um, looking mainly at the voice over IP protocols or telephony protocols. Uh, Packetbit is looking at uh, things like HTTP, MySQL, Postgres, Redis, Thrift RPC, and, and this kind of protocol. So more, more uh, things that you would use on, on the back end of the application. We could have uh, uh, AMQP. Uh, we don't have it yet, but that would be like a logical addition, right, for this, for this type of uh, platforms. And the way it works is that it looks in the traffic for what looks like a request and waits for the matching response so that it cap can capture data from both the request and from the response, also the response time, the response code, and so on. Um, so you would normally run it uh, like this. It's, that starts it in the foreground and with a bit of debugging. And it creates, um, uh, it will print at standard output uh, a JSON file, which contains some interesting things from the, from the transaction it, it captures. In this case, it's a, it's a, it's a MySQL request response. Uh, you can see the method is a select. We have some data from the response, for example, that there were two rows. You can also save the actual rows, uh, but that's not in the default configuration. Uh, it captures the response time. Uh, and, uh, and the size of the response, and other things. And yeah, this is for MySQL, it's pretty similar for any other protocol. And what do we do with all this data? I mean, imagine you would deploy this everywhere in your network, you can imagine there's quite a bit of data generated. Uh, well, we store it in Elasticsearch, 
uh, via Logstash optionally. It can insert also directly into Elasticsearch or via uh, Redis and, and Logstash and visualize it with, uh, with Kibana. Uh, why did we choose that? Uh, uh, for a few reasons. Uh, the first, that we knew the Elk stack works well with, uh, with uh, logs, right? It's used as scale by many very large companies. I know about installations doing close to one million events per second uh, with Elasticsearch, so we, we knew this would scale, which was, was an important factor. Uh, then important it was for, for, for me, uh, that it was having a simple flow. It's quite clear. So data is produced by packet bit. Uh, it's transported by Logstash, indexed by Elasticsearch, and visualized by Kibana, right? This is what you want from a monitoring system. You want it to be simple so you can understand where, where things go wrong if they do uh, pretty quickly. Um, and it's using this big data approach to, to aggregations, uh, which is the, to send the code where the data is, not the other way around, right? Because the code is much smaller. Uh, and this is how it can, this is kind of how it can really horizontally scale. It's like uh, Google's uh, big table work, how Hadoop works, how, how these things work in general. <coughs> Uh, and because of, it's a search engine and has powerful aggregations, some of the features that were really hard to implement uh, in Palladion, for example, and in all similar systems, uh, become very, very simple. Uh, I'm going to show you some screenshots. These are for, from Kibana 4. Uh, so, for example, here it's searching for all transactions that are uh, not okay. You see the it's uh, the status okay is in red. That means it's negated of type MySQL, right? So it will show you all MySQL errors basically. And you can also search. So you can search. It does free text search because Elasticsearch is obviously a search engine. It's just that we use it more as an analytics engine, uh, but it can do search, and it works good. Um, and then it can do things like uh, this one here, uh, response times per sentence. Uh, yeah, if you, if you have a monitoring product that shows you only the average for things like PDD or response times, then that's pretty useless because averages just don't tell you that much, right? It's much better to use uh, uh, percentiles like the uh, 99 percentile, that means 99 of the, of the requests are faster than this. Uh, these are m a lot more meaningful to, to monitor. And uh, Elasticsearch has a percentile aggregations. Uh, you can also do latency diagram. Again, something that's very useful. So for example, in this case, you can see that while most of the requests are answered within 20 milliseconds, all right? Uh, again, a very, a very useful feature. Um, all right. Next, you can also see kind of like the latency diagram. So it's split in buckets up here. Uh, but you also see how it evolves over, over time. And down here, you see uh, just the response uh, uh, codes, but sliced by, uh, by the URL. And you can slice really by any dimension, right? By host, by IP address, by whatever you can think, method, anything like that. Um, all of these, by the way, are dashboards that we provide with PacketBit. So you don't normally, when you use Kibana, you start sort of with an empty page and you have to add all this. But uh, with PacketBit, because we know exactly how the data looks like, uh, we can also give you the, the, the pre-configured dashboards of these things. You, you have them out of the box, which is pretty cool. Uh, another feature that's really easy to do with Elasticsearch uh, is things like top 10 slowest things or top 10 most frequent things. Uh, like for example, here for an RPC, we see the most common uh, function calls or the slowest ones, so on. Uh, all right, another example uh, is, uh, this is the, a chart showing the total time a clock time spent in each tire of your application. So, because this is mostly about, uh, uh, this example is about uh, web applications. It's the time spent in the, in the web layer, then this much time in the database layer, and so on, right? Um, 
All right, and this is what PacketBit is today, but we always, from the beginning, me and Monica intended it to, to, to have the, this packet data only the beginning and to add multiple sources. And uh, other potential sources would be uh, OS readings, like simple things like uh, uh, CPU, memory, IO stats, and so on. Uh, code instrumentation, um, uh, API gateways for HTTP APIs, uh, starts from internal uh, s uh, servers, like from Nginx or Camaelio and so on. Uh, we, were also, uh, we were also talking to Daniel to see if we can make uh, um, an integration so that we can get interesting data from Camaelio, and this is what's, what this talk is about, to see if there's interest in uh, such a thing. Um, Right, and uh, we have some good news. So uh, while, while talking with, uh, with uh, Shai Bannon, he's uh, uh, CTO at the company behind Elasticsearch, called now Elastic, we realize we have quite a bit of common ground uh, in the vision, in what we want to create. Uh, so it was just announced the other day uh, that me and Monica are joining Elastic. Uh, so, and we will get some some power behind this project in terms of development time. So it's just good news. Uh, it's going to be an open source project, which will be well maintained, like Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana, which are all uh, Elastic projects. Um, right. And we also came with this idea that, OK, we have packet bit for, uh, for uh, packet data, uh, but we can have other bits as well. So not only packet bit but also file bit, uh, which will read from log files. This already exists, actually. It's called logstash forwarder. It's also written in Go, just like packet bit. Uh, but we, we want to make it more similar with packet bit as well. And as I was saying, we have plans to, to, to add the uh, uh, top bit, uh, which will get you CPU memory for each process and so on. Metrics bit, which will work something like uh, with Sensu scripts to get metrics from the system, whatever you want. You can use that uh, uh, easily to, to get data from, from Camoelio as well, for example. And others, RAM bit, which is real user monitoring bit. Uh, and yeah, we should discuss if it makes sense to have a Camoelio bit. I would be pretty excited to have that. Uh, uh, but I want to, to see if there's interest. Uh, all right, that was pretty much from me. If you want to stay in touch, there's this uh, forum hosted by Elastic uh, where we discuss things about bits. It's like a mailing list. It's just more web, web UI. And there's going to be a webinar in which you will go into much detail, much more details about what, uh, what we'll do with uh, uh, packet bit in the future and with the other bits. It's free, of course. Uh, and yeah, if you want to, to learn more, you can, you can register to that one. Um, and I will, I will tweet this link so you don't have to. It's pretty long, I know. <laughs> uh, and that's pretty much from me. OK, Thanks. thank you. Um, yeah, already you can use it actually when I approach uh, Tudor early this year in the winter. I like the idea and, you know, we rely quite a lot on SQL and just being able to monitor SQL query, uh, it's uh, important because, for example, accounting, it's always stored in uh, SQL and when you do an insert or an update because of the constraints and you have a lot of traffic and slow down. Of course, we have asynchronous, but it's good to keep an eye. Of course, you have all these uh, log slow queries by MySQL and so on, and uh, but having something visual and where you can search and identify quickly uh, was very interesting and uh, being at the beginning, uh, yeah, uh, Tudor had to define the, the internal structure and of course HTTP is uh, uh, one of the, the areas where you have this layering, but also the idea was, okay, you have invite in, let's see how long it takes to get the invite out and we have there this layer, get the password, so a couple of queries and whatsoever. So I think it would be interesting, of course, uh, uh, it's an open source, still an open source project, uh, as you heard. Uh, fortunately, they don't really need to run after money now, so we can press them with more uh, 
request for features. So the idea is, guys, make this request for features because I'm sure the, that will be uh, um, something that will be taken in consideration. So other questions uh, uh, from the audience about uh, packet bit and uh, monitoring what you like to see on, okay, we have this SIP troubleshooting with Homer, but with Kamailio and SIP processing, it's more than just sending SIP packets to the network. Is there any RTP statistics? Uh, no, no, not, no. Not, not, not in packet bit. That, that's coming, coming cheap with Palladion, or how is that long? <laughs> <laughs> Homer has it, so yeah, it's uh, more like uh, actions from no longer like voice quality, but what it takes to route uh, packets behind, and I think that's really important for performances. It's when all SIP goes fine, but why is going slow? Uh -huh. By the way, Homer can also write to Elasticsearch, right? So you, it's you can you can use them together. I think that. So you have SIP data and RTP data, if Homer can do that, and also put in the same place, also in Elasticsearch, uh, how long your MySQL queries are taking and everything, so you get the full picture there. I think, I think that's a good thing. Yeah, so for me at least I'm good at uh, looking at an encrypt, and that's fine, I don't need any Homer, but you know, sometimes yeah, people are saying, it's slow, why it's slow? So we have to see the SQL, or sometimes even writing to syslog can get uh, you troubles if you log a lot, and some people uh, are in love with xlog module in Kamailio. <laughs> so everything that could be measured and nicely displayed, uh, it's, um, in terms of performances, is something that I do like. And as you could notice, it's easier to sell something that has a graphic interface rather than some VI logs, maybe because we can't actually exit from VI that fast to sell it. But uh, yeah, it's nicer for the monitoring uh, and voice ops uh, team. So if uh, no other question, uh, thank you, Tudor. And uh, as we are behind the uh, schedule,